Hi everyone, welcome to What Does the Bible Teach with Pastor Joshua Olivares. I am Jamie, and in today's episode, we will be discussing on how to study the Bible. What should be the right motives of approach when studying the Bible? And is studying the Bible for everyone? And what are the necessary tools and methods for interpreting the scriptures correctly? And lastly, for someone who is new to the faith, where should they start in their Bible reading? So, Pastor Josh, without further ado, what does the Bible teach? Thank you, Jamie. Now, before we get into the technical side of how to study the Bible with the proper tools, methods, and sources for an accurate interpretation of the text, first and foremost, we must closely examine our motives on why we are studying the Bible to begin with. And I would like to start off by listing down the wrong motives for studying the Bible. Because if our motives are wrong, then studying the Bible becomes pointless. So here are several things we must avoid. Motive number one, pride. We should never study the Bible for the sake of self-glory, to win arguments, or to simply impress people with the knowledge that we obtain. For the Bible teaches us in James chapter 3, verses 14 and 16, Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. Motive number two, reading the Bible just for the sake of reading. Now, some read the Bible out of curiosity, as they would with any other book, while others simply read because their church or pastors tell them to, even though deep down, they themselves are not interested, which then would cause them to turn Bible reading as a vain routine, completely missing the purpose and point of it. Now, the Bible teaches us in John chapter 5, verse 39, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me. Then in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, an ox knows its owner and a donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. And lastly, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 14, the Bible teaches us, In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. So these are motives that are to be avoided when approaching to study the Bible. For the Bible teaches us plainly in Psalm chapter 139, verses 23 and 24, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts, and see if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the everlasting way. Now, by having our thoughts and intentions being made right by God, Here are the correct motives when studying the Bible. Motive number one, study the Bible with a desire to know Christ. The Bible teaches us here in Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 8, More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. Then in verse 10, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death. Then in 2 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. 
Motive number two, study the Bible with a desire to grow spiritually. Here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, the Bible teaches us, Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn babies, long or desire for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. Then in Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Motive number three, study the Bible with delight. In Psalm chapter 119, verses 47 and 48, the Bible teaches us, I shall delight in your commandments, which I love, and I shall lift up my hands to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statues. Then in Psalm chapter 1, verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And lastly, here in Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Motive number four, study the Bible for truth and clarity. Here in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, Now these were noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. And in Luke chapter 24, verses 25 to 27, And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Motive number five, study the Bible to give defense for the truth. The Bible teaches us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Then in Jude 1, verse 3, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all handed down to the saints. Motive number six, study the Bible for daily application. In other words, obey and apply what you read because of your love for God. The Bible teaches us in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then in John chapter 14 verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. And last but not least, here in James chapter 1 verse 25, but one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. And the last motive that we do not want to miss is motive number seven. Study the Bible 
for the glory of God. The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Then in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And lastly, here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, If anyone speaks, he should speak as one conveying the words of God. If anyone serves, he should serve with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So now that we have dealt with the motives of approaching the Bible, one must answer a very important question, and that is, are you saved by faith in Jesus Christ? Because the Bible is inspired by God, and God the Holy Spirit is both author and teacher of the sacred scriptures, no matter how educated or technical a person can be, only those who are saved and filled with the Spirit can understand the Word of God. The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. So the Bible makes it explicitly clear that only those who are filled with the Spirit may understand the divine truths of the Bible. And therefore, if one desires to be filled with the Spirit, they must believe the gospel and repent of their sins, as stated in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is why, as we continue more on the next podcast, as we deal with the methods, tools, and sources for properly interpreting the Bible, if you have any questions concerning about today's episode or questions about the Bible in general, kindly let us know, and we will do what we can to answer your questions on this podcast, What Does the Bible Teach? This is Brother Joshua Olivares, just wanting to gladly remind you that Jesus Christ is God.